예. <웃음> 예. 예. I think I was 12 when I first got a mandolin. I sold some fox hides and I went to a music store over in Cambridge, Ohio and bought a mandolin. The sound of it did something for me. You know, it really, I would tune into that and really pay attention to it. You know, it was really exhilarating, something about it. Well, I left home when I was sub-17. I went and lived with my uncle, Mike, the um, mandolin maker. I stayed about a year with him. So I come to Athens with the full intent of going back, but I just got sucked in, you know. It was like young guy, I was 19 years old, you know, young women everywhere, young guys. It was just, you know, totally got sucked in. I heard in my head a mandolin part, you know, and I could kind of fantasize that there was a place for, for mandolin. I didn't know Zeke when I first started out. And I was asking around, where can I find, you know, a really good mandolin player? And people mentioned some different names and they said, but, you know, if you want the best on the planet, you got to go find Zeke Hutchison. No, that's not quite right. Yes. Although we can do that. Okay. We can do that. We can do anything we want. I think that's kind of cool. Actually, do it. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Let's put it in there. Okay. And I had this idea of doing um, hymns because that's what I grew up with as a missionary kid. So hymns were very much a part of the musical literature that, that I was familiar with. The themes have to be recognizable and they have to be beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, we've got this great material to work with, but the invention part is the challenge. That's it. Because we can sit down and play these things over and over right. again. But they're soon enough sound all alike. Right. I wasn't raised in a church and they just struck me as really beautiful and sincere melodies, you know. And so we're like, hey, we've got to see what we can do with this, you know. And uh, I think that's how on my side, anyway, it started. That's the money moment right there. For me, when I play, it's a very meditative state. It's a, it's a thing where I kind of go into my own world, some of the different possibilities, you know, as far as how we live and, uh, you know, how we affect others. And, you know, what's, what's the point of all this anyway? Kind of the questions people start to ask after a while. If you've spent any time in a traditional church, you, you know these. These are just part of your DNA. Well, the fact that he doesn't know them, in a way, gives us a chance to try something totally different because he's not locked into the way it's sung. And, and that's very cool. Yeah, I think it's the kind of pairing that comes out of some place like Athens. Take music from more or less the European tradition or high church and interpreted with steel string guitar and mandolin in an Appalachian setting and with whatever, you know, has something to do with that place, you know. Yeah, I don't know, I'm enjoying it, I'm learning about it. It's a different context than I've ever played in, so you just see where it goes. <laughs> I'll never hear that song the original way again. Really, I mean, I'll always want the pauses there. It's so cool. <laughs>